Okay, so I'm going to kind of go backwards through this. Normally, we start out with, with uh, record searches and go right into those, but I'm going to go through a little bit backwards. So one, if you're interested in joining Arctos, um, all you have to do is, is fill out one of these nice little request forms, and it'll go to the people who are um, here to, to help. Okay, and this will give us a, a nice idea of what kind of collection you have, what issues you may have, um, and you know what your data look like, and so this is a really nice um, entry point into Arctos. Uh, we have mentors. We have again, you know, people who are here to help you, and they're they're absolutely willing to to jump in and help you bring your collection into Arctos. I'm going to skip through this uh, portal. So we have you know hundreds of, of collections in here now, and millions of specimens. I'm not going to go into that, but you can peruse the different collections that are currently using it. Um, Arctos has tons of data services to help you clean your data, um, you know, to help make your, make, you know, if you're, if you're trying to bring your data in, there's lots of nice tools here that allow you to do that. Um, and, and we're here to help you do that as well, okay? And there's also lots of tools um, for, for tracking usage, for example. So it's a really useful um, way to show um, you know, how we're being queried, how, how your, your specimens are being used. Uh, lots of good, good data in here as well. Um, in terms of managing Arctos, so each one of us, each collection is a, a VPN, a virtual private network. And so, you know, we manage our own material and it's, and it's private. Um, and as a, man a data manager, you have the power to, uh, you know, give anyone in your sphere a power to do whatever you want with, with your data. So it can be fully private or you can have, you can give people permissions and such. And this is where you would, you would do all that. Gives you all the different users of your collections and, and how you, you, uh, you know, give different roles. So then, into the kind of the nuts and bolts. So we can do lots of really, really cool stuff here. And, and I'm gonna be doing everything as an operator, okay? So if I log out as a public user, then I would have access to all the collections in Arctos and it gets a little bit harder to, to demonstrate stuff simply. But for searches, if you're not sure what's out there and you're just doing searches, you probably wanna go in as a, either a public user or create your own uh, public operator login, basically. And that's the only way you can download data as well. So you, you do need to log in for that. But I'm gonna go in as a, as, as a user, basically, right? And that gives me a lot more options and the ability to, to access uh, tools that uh, normally you wouldn't have. Okay, so we can, we can you know, one, one of the really great things about Arctos is, is every different aspect of what we think of as a specimen record is linked and tied to every different, every other aspect. So, you know, we can do things like search on, on agents, right? So if I, if I come in as myself here and I can find myself and I can go to that agent and this gives me a way to, to search people, right? And I can view everything that that person has been able, you know, what, what they've contributed to Arctos, everything in Arctos that, that may be tied to that person. Okay, different name strings, um, you know, where they're from, all the different groups that they may be associated with, right? So you can tie agents to other agents, uh, you can tie agents to groups. So it's, it's a, a really nice way to, to deal with people as well. And then it also gives you, you can, you can access all the different lists of specimens that may be associated with, with that agent. Projects that they may be associated with, publications there, there in Arctos. So lots and lots of power. Um, like everything in, in the database, it depends on what's been entered, right? So it's still, it's still fully dependent on, on the, the, the effort that we put into to build our, our databases and, and, and make these relationships. This all the, you know, so I can go to all the specimens that, that I may be associated with in some manner, et cetera. So lots of really nice uh, ways to get at um, the, the way individuals are, are, are doing science in Arctos. 
Um, so object tracking is super powerful, and this is something that Marielle's going to go into after I'm done. Um, it's a whole other deal in itself, and one of the really great things that, that Arctos has that, that many other databases out there uh, don't do a good job of. So this is a really nice thing. Okay, so then the, the other really powerful thing about Arctos is, is the way we can do transactions. It, it does a great job of, of tracking things. Okay, so as an example, accessions. Right, so you can, you can go in, you can create accessions. Okay, it'll give you your next accession that's, that's due to come up. You can pick that, you can put in whatever your, this accession is. Um, there are different fields for, you know, where you can put in agents, uh, funding sources, agencies, uh, you name it. So lots of different agent picks and different um, you know, reasons why those agents might be um, might be someone you want to include on there. Um, you know, what type of a, an accession this is. So yeah, just a nice uh, job to, of, of being able to organize your accession data. And then if you want to search for accessions, so let's see which ones I'm going to pull out. So I was going to look for stuff from Mongolia. So we've got a bunch of accessions from Mongolia and I'm going to take this 2015 So when one of the really nice things about accessions is you can also tie everything together with these accessions, right? So Arctos does a good job of having projects. We can tie different projects to an accession. We can tie media. So we can put in, you know, all the, the paperwork, all the extra data, ancillary data that came with uh, that original accession. We can tie in permits. Um, so it's another, another nice, place where, where, you know, if, if you're just searching for um, material from one individual accession, this does a nice job of linking you to all the different potential uh, parts and pieces and legal materials, as well as all the specimens. So we can go to a specimen list, we can pull all the specimens that are in that accession, uh, we, we can um, go ahead and, and map it, right, there are really great mapping capabilities of, of Arctos. So lots of nice, um, tools just within uh, the accession tool. Same thing for loans, right? You can pull up, you can, you can make loans really nicely. Um, gives you a list of, of all different types of loans that you can add in there. It's very, very simple. Again, it gives you your next consecutive loan number. It's just an easy way to, to track things. Okay. I want to find another loan. So this is a loan we, we did to a, a researcher here at UNM uh, to do stable isotope work. Again, you can tie the, the loans to projects. You can, you know, loans, it's, it's a nice way to, um, you know, track as things were coming back, all sorts of issues that, that may arise. So you can, you can, you know, for example, this, this loan, when it was first entered, happened right when Arctos went down for that one moment, right? Right, and this allows us to track those kind of things and, and you know, in, basically keep things cleaned up. So what else, I, what I, other thing I wanted to do with this is that, that the nice thing that this does is it also ties your loans to all the different reports, right? Reporting is critical to all of us. And this allows us to um, auto generate whatever we need for this loan. So you can, you know, right off the bat, you can, you know, print your, your shipping labels,
You can go in, you can print any of the, the reports that are out there, right? So if you want your, um, let's see, we could do our invoice. So it prints out a nice invoice for your loan, condition reporting and everything on it. We could, what else do we want to do on there? Anyways, no, that's probably good. So the, the idea is that, you know, any printing deals that you need to do, uh, you can go directly from, from your loans as well. Um, it has good shipping information to track your shipments, whether you need, and if you need to include uh, things like permits and such on there, it's all trackable on the loan section. And then permits, right? So we've just started doing a better job of, of linking, tracking our permits, okay? So you can easily create permits here. It's super, super fast. You just type, type in whatever identifying number you want for your permit. Um, it's got a drop down to, to give you, you know, whatever, whatever type of permit that might be, right? So very easy to quickly uh, do this. An issued by, issued to agent, gives you, you know, who it's from, um, who it's to, and then expiration date and such. And Octus will give you notifications. You know, once you put in an expiration date in there, Octus will send a contact person saying this, you know, this permit is just about up, for example. Okay. And if we want to search for a permit, so we could search for permits you know, on, on a person or a type. So, you know, I could search for, for CITES permits and it'll pull up all the CITES permits that are in there, right? I don't want to see everybody's CITES permits, but um, if I wanted to, I could, I could, you know, or I could, you know, put someone else's, I could put, you know, just my stuff in there, or I don't need to put anything. I can just put issue two. So maybe I'll put uh, Cook, I'll put Joe Cook in there and this will pull up all of Joe Cook's permits. And another thing that's cool is you can, so you can, you can track these things and you can track, okay, this is a renewal of this other permit. So it's a, yeah, it's a, another nice kind of clearinghouse for all your legal documents as well. It doesn't have to just be permits. You can put some other stuff in there as well. So nice. And then one other thing in managed data that's really nice is, is the encumbrances. Okay, so sometimes, you know, we need to encumber a record for whatever reason. Okay, and, and so this like for any, any, you know, so we, you can mask the entire record if you need to, right? If there's some issue with it or if it's, a, um, a, you know, for whatever reason, you don't want it to be publicly viewed. Um, you can mask the whole thing or you can mask just subsets of your record. And, or you can also just put things like usage restrictions, things to give you a, a flag as to whether or not you, um, you know, you want to loan this material or, or whatever. Okay. Um, and there's, okay, great different ways to do data entry here. Um, I'm not going to go into them, but you can either do things manually. You can enter each individual record manually. If you've got students or whatever that, that are doing, you know, individual things, but then they're great bulk loader tools, right? So, so you can create bulk loader files and upload, you know, thousands at a time. And then you can also batch load tools. So basically if you've already got records in there, but you want to add a whole nother set of data to, to a batch of records, uh, you can do that with, you know, for basically any of the different um, attributes in, in your records. So another really, really labor saving, um, nice tool. Okay, so now the, to the kind of the main 
meat of, 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 of Arctos is, you know, the search capability. What can you search on? What, what kind of data are, are in there that we can, we can search on? Well, I'll wait for records and do that last, but so I'll kind of start with some of these others. So because Arctos has this really nice uh, publication and, and project um, building system, um, you know, we can use this to, uh, to, to really tie things together. So I'm going to search on BCP, which is short for the Beringian Coevolution Project. It's a big project out of here, and, and Joe Cook um, started it when he was up at Alaska. And this is a nice uh, representation of what a project can do. So it, it has all the critical agents that are associated with that project, including the sponsor, which is nice. You can, you can use this to, to track um, funding sources and, and provide data to sources, to, to your funding sources. Um, it just has a, a brief description. It, you can tie any publications that you wanna tie to your projects. It lists all the different uh, records that are part of that project, as well as specimens that were contributed to that project, right? It could be from us, but they could be from some other institution that, that provided material for this project. It doesn't matter. Lots of different projects that contributed and projects that used these materials. Also, is a place where you the media that's associated with, with that project can also be found in one single place. So again, just a place to, to put everything and tie everything together in, in one useful uh, point and click summary area. Okay, so another nice way we can um, search on here is we can search media, right? There's tons of media hosted at, you know, all, all archived at TAC um, that we can now access in, in Arctos. So I'm going to just pull up some stuff that, that I threw in there at one point. And just to give you some of the, the, you know, the range of materials in there, field notes, Felt tag data, so you know from you know this is from New Mexico Department of Game and Fish. So basically, any kind of uh, paperwork or anything that you want to include um, is easily stuck in here and linked back to your specimens and fully searchable. Okay, and then to get into the actual meat of just the general search options for our dose. Again, we're just looking at stuff that we have here at MSB because I'm logged in. But the, you know, the amazing thing here is you've got tons of different identifier types. You've got different types of identification and taxonomy, geography, date collector information, part information, usage, usage fields, media fields, relationships, curatorial. So there's this massive amount of, of potential areas where you can, you can search. So basically any combination you can come up with, you can basically do that. So you can basically filter your results um, in any way that you would, you would like to. So I'm just going to pull up microcavia. So those are guinea pigs from South America. And so I'm going to use a, you know, a taxonomic name. And then I'm going to go in and do a geographic search uh, 
using a bounding box. And, you know, this works nicely. The only drawback is it, it's using stuff that's, that's georeferenced. So if, if all your material is not georeferenced, it won't come up in this particular search. So you always want to remember that. Okay, so we'll try that. Okay, so I get I get seven records. Okay, and so you know this is what your output put will look like. It's basically a you know list of all the specimens that met your criteria. And now I, I can do a lot of things with, with these data, right? So I can quickly map them if I want. In Berkeley Mapper. I can add more data fields. So I've got some there, but maybe I need more information than what is, what is there. So I can now, you know, add or subtract any number of data fields. It slows it down the more um, of these that you select, but um, for all intents and purposes, it, you know, you, you'll get what you need if you, if you want to use this, this, uh, this, you know, this host of, of different attributes. And then this is again where you would do any downloads. So again, if you're logged in, you can download these data, look at them in any way you want to look at them. And then this is also the place where you can do things to this group of specimens that you just downloaded or that you just, you just pulled up, right? So I can, so anything I have here of these seven records, everything that I can do here will be done on those records, right? So I can, I can go in and I can modify parts. So maybe I accidentally added a, an incorrect part or something, or I need to add something new. Um, I can do all that right here in this, this bulk format. Or I can modify the existing parts, okay? So maybe these embryos should be ethanol preserved as opposed to frozen, okay? So I can do all that in this, in this system right here. Or I can simply just get rid of parts. This is also where you can go in and, and Print. So this is where, again, if, if I'm making uh, vial labels or, or something, if, if I'm, you know, I'm installing specimens and, and I need labels. You can just put them like that and then print your labels right from there. So it's pretty clean and easy. All right. So now if I go into a single record here, this is what you see. And within a single record, there are so many options to then go to the next step, right? So we can now search taxonomy, right? So Arctos uses this you know, this global name system where you can, you can choose your own taxo taxonomy, basically. So we have Arctos taxonomy, but then you've also got the, sac the taxonomy from Catalog of Life, Freebase, GBIF. So the idea being there's, there are all these different potential uh, taxonomic systems that, that are available to you when you're in here. Now I've lost my things, it's covered up. <laughs> All 
Um, so, in, and then you can go into your identifications. And what's really nice here is that it, it keeps all of your existing identifications, right? So, so when you're re-IDing an individual, you of course want to keep the history, right? You want to know who called it what prior to this moment, and you want to know what methods they may have used, right? Did they were they looking at morphology? Were were they using molecular data? Um, is this a, a type specimen? Whatever. So these are the kind of things that okay, that you can track here. You can go into collectors, and like I showed you before, you can find out everything associated with each of those collectors. And then you can go into locality. And locality, this is a, a really powerful part of Arctos. So Arctos uses this event-based locality system. And so we share localities, okay? And so this individual was from this locality and there are five other specimens at this locality and each locality has an event, right? So if I'm either recataloging something or cataloging something new, maybe from the same locality, but, uh, but you know, from a different date, I can you know, go into you know, either the event or the locality and, and create new ones. Okay. So for example, I can go into this locality and I can either clone it and make changes to it. If it's a locality that's similar to this one, for example, maybe shares the same, uh, some of the same data, but not all of it. I can make a new locality. Or if, if, if I want simply to, to have a new collecting event, I can just add a collecting event to this locality and it'll keep this locality and just give me new, new dates, new collecting method and such um, that I can, I can add to it. Um, the other nice thing is that any locality is, you, you know, you have the ability to georeference on the fly, okay? If, if, those, if the georeference data weren't um, provided to you initially, uh, you can go in, you can use geolocate, for example, and it will pull out what it thinks might be a good pick for you, um, and then you, you can adjust it um, within, the, within geolocate and then re-georeference your, your locality. So another really nice tool. All right, so now I'm gonna pull up a new record and show you places where we have multiple collecting events. So the, the record I just showed you had a single collecting event, right? A lot of us are now doing um, work that may entail um, having multiple events for the same individual. So this is a Mexican wolf. So we, we are the repository for all the Mexican wolf material, whether it's um, full specimens or uh, serially sample bloods and sera. Uh, from the reintroduction program for the, the Mexican wolf in the Southwest. And so that means we're getting continuous samples from the same individuals. You know, maybe that individual will die at some point and we will have the full specimen here. Um, but until that time, we'll have a series of, of, of other samples from the same animal. And so Arctos allows us to, to track this, right? So. You know, we give each individual sample a specific number when it comes in, and that specific set of samples is tied to a specific collecting event, right? So we have multiple collecting events. You know, this, it, was, it was caught at one point 
at, on the Ladder Ranch, which is one of the, one of the uh, holding facilities, and blood samples were taken, okay? At another time, this animal was released, okay? And so it was out, on the, out in the Blue Range recovery area, and it was, it was darted and sampled, okay? So the, the, you know, the main thing is that we want to be able to tie individual samples back to individual events, right? Because things change through time. So, we, you know, we want to know if, if, if we're looking at a pathogen, for example, um, if it's positive at one point in time and negative at another point in time, vice versa, whatever. So this kind of allows us to do that. And I think Mariel will probably be able to speak more to this down the road as well. But some of these specimens, um, you know, have many, many, many events associated with them. So this is kind of a critical aspect that, that um, Arctos is useful for. The other thing that this allows us to do is it allows us to um, have relationships, okay? So for some animals, we know siblings, we know offspring, we know parents, right? And things in the Mexican wolf recovery program are, you know, those, those are, are known entities, right? We know what, who, who was bred together with who to get who, whom. And so this allows us to toggle back and forth between offspring or parents or whatever, any type of relationship that, that you can think of, um, Arctos can make those, those ties and that's super critical. Okay. So another really powerful tool in Arctos is its citation linkage and, and tracking capabilities. Okay, so this is a, a, a shrew, flat skulled shrew from Russia. And this animal is the symbiotype for a new Hanna virus, okay? And so if you're doing pathogen work, it's absolutely critical to be able to track hosts, right? If you're working with parasites or pathogens, whatever, um, uh, tying hosts to parasites and pathogens is, is absolutely vital when it comes down, you know, when you need to verify identifications or, or whatever. And so we do that. And, um, you know, we link, you know, we, we, these things are, are labeled in Arctos as symbiotypes or type specimens like you would do you know, any kind of type material. And Arctos does a really nice job of being able to input publications and then tie specimens to those publications, right? So this is the publication that where this new virus was described from this specimen. And you have all these tools to then manage that, that, that citation. Okay, so we can go into manage citations, and this is where you can um, add citations if you're just coming in to start with. And there's all different types of, of potential um, terms to, to label whatever this specimen might be. And, you know, where it is, and, and if this is the new identification, you know, lots of metadata associated with, with the specimens that are, that are linked to this publication. And this just allows you to do that. Okay. You can also link out directly to the publication, right, which is nice. You can cross-reference, see what other papers have cited this paper, which is really useful for, for, for our own use as to, you know, how these, the science is extended. And then we can go into these specimens that are in there and we can do some other stuff. So if we look at this guy. So this now allows us to really show the power of Arctos and the way that it links out to outside databases, right? This is, you know, one of the things that, that has made Arctos as, as, you know, amazing as it is, is that we can do reciprocal link outs to you know, things like GenBank, ISOBank, 
you know, all these all these external databases uh, that, that that tie back. Okay, so for example, we can tie the specimen itself. Right, so this is you know a, a beta fibrigen gene sequence tied to it. So we can tie stuff from the the host, and we can tie viral sequences back as well. Okay, and this is really critical because many people who are accessing Arctos data are not accessing it through Arctos, right? They are biologists or microbiologists or virologists, um, people who are going into GenBank and looking for specimens in GenBank, looking for gene sequence data in GenBank. If you've got a reciprocal link that can take you back to Arctos, it increases the use of Arctos tremendously and we found that out. And so we can do that, right? So it's got this link out here. So people coming into uh, GenBank who have never heard of Arctos before can see where this comes from and they can, they can go back to the original specimen. And, and that's good quality science, right? Being able to tie back to the original specimen. All right. So there's that. Then the other interesting thing we can do here is we can go between collections, okay? So we've got um, different collections, whether it's outside of MSB or within MSB, that have specimens that are related to each other, okay? So this is a, this is a uh, flea that was collected from that host, and this is the record for that animal, okay? So it's this ability to go back and forth and tie things together that makes it so powerful. We can go, we can link out to GBIF. Okay. We can link out to iDigBio. You know, so it's basically just giving us ways to tie our database to every other database that's out there. Globy. Oh, it's going a little slow. And this is about relationships, biotic interactions. All right. How are we doing time-wise? I'm going long, aren't I, Emily? Yeah, we about, have about 15 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> All right, okay, I'm gonna speed up then real fast. Okay, so we're just gonna look, we're gonna go to one more here. there's lots of media that we can link to and I'm since I'm going so slow I'm not able to show you everything but this is recent stuff that we've done uh, so we're doing CT scanning and so this is a paramiscus that we have CT scanned and you can go view these things on Sketchfab which is another platform and you know being able to link to things like this um, this really gives us an avenue to get into, you know, things like K through 12 education, um, you know, other areas of use or art, various, various other places where people can access these kind of materials um, in a way with it maybe they haven't before. And this, again, has this reciprocal link that allows us to go, go back and forth. And then we can also tag things, right? So we can, we can tag uh, media, which is really nice. So um, this is uh, a marmot that was collected by Robert Rausch and he's got um, their specimen, their um, parasites that are associated with this. And we've tagged that piece of media so that we know, okay, this Roush number here relates back to MSB 
you know, 136507. So again, the ability to tie other things to each other is, is really powerful. Okay, I, I got more, but I don't have time. So I will hand it off to Marielle, who will give an overview on object tracking, because that's another super, super powerful aspect of ArcDOS. Okay, thank you, John. Um, just want to refer everybody in case we've run out of time um, in the original resources that Emily provided. Thanks, John. It would help if I unmute. Um, <laughs> um, I'd just like to point every, out to everybody that we do have a separate webinar on object tracking. And Can anybody hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you're good. Okay, all right. Um, just wanted to give you a link to the object tracking webinar in case we run out of time and that and in the original resources that Emily provided. So um, obviously I can't do a full full justice to object tracking uh, in the amount of time, but I, I do think it's really worth um, pointing out uh, that, let me go here. Um, Hide floating meeting tools, there we go. That um, object tracking essentially works in Arctos as a, a separate but a parallel database to the cataloged record system or the, or the catalog um, database. And what that allows you to do is something pretty interesting. Right here, I'm showing you one of our, our um, field or prep data, um, data sheets. Our, in the case of MSB, we use an NK number series and this is the original data that were recorded on this giraffe that came to us from the Rio Grande Zoo. And these are the measurements, et cetera, that were taken uh, as the animal was, was being prepped in our prep room. And notice that there's, in addition to the standard uh, skin and skull only or skull skeleton preparation for this specimen, we also took tissues. We took muscle, um, a number of different uh, tubes of muscle that were frozen. And uh, you'll see that under, there's a barcode column here to, to capture. We can, from the moment of collection, and this can happen in the field, this could happen in the prep room, wherever, you can assign a barcode to to any number of specimen parts. Um, arc, object tracking in Arctos works for anything that can be put into a container. And so if you can put something in a container, a piece of muscle or a, a skin on a shelf or a skull in a vial, then you can assign a barcode to it and you can put it in a location and you can track its location. And this can happen before the organism, the specimen is cataloged. So from the moment of collection by assigning these barcodes, you can start tracking the positions and the location and the history of a specimen. So this giraffe, these giraffe tissues were barcoded at, um, during collection, they were put in the freezer, they were brought up to the Division of Genomic Resources. And uh, at the time of cataloging, these barcodes then would be entered with the rest of the data in the catalog record. So if you go back to, um, the original Arctos record, or once it's been cataloged for this giraffe, you'll see that, well, it's got a couple of different identifications, the original one we got from the zoo, and then later confirmation by John. You can see that it has media associated with it, and that media is the um, scan of the uh, original NK page that came with, uh, that we, that we um, entered data on. We've got various prepared We've got the original zoo number, the global animal identifier that links to the international zoo databases, etc. And we also have um, down to the bottom here, I hope I'm not scrolling too fast, the list of parts that are associated with a specimen. And now you can see that those muscle parts that you saw in the original data sheet and their barcodes now are captured here with the specimen record and they show the part location of where that particular uh, sample is located. In this case, it's in uh, the Division of Genomic Re Resources, in freezer, the minus 80 freezer room, in freezer 7, position 20, freezer rack, and ultimately in a freezer box in position 84. And we have a label and a barcode associated with that uh, muscle sample. And the label we capture in the Genomic Resources Division separately from the catalog data. So we would hope that this label information corresponds, in this case, NK301854, we would hope it corresponds to 
the same identifier that was entered at the time of cataloging. And if it does, then yay, everything's good because that's a double check. If something, if the wrong barcode were entered in the, with a sample, or if we, if something were mistranscribed, uh, we would be able to catch the, the that discrepancy and uh, resolve it. So object tracking again can occur from the moment of collection. So let me go up here at the top of the specimen record. You can also go to a tab that takes you to part location. So I say I want to know where all the parts were for this giraffe. Um, and I want to actually see them. Now I've entered into our object tracking database. And this shows me everything associated with this giraffe, uh, the genomic resources samples. Um, one in, uh, they're all in the same freezer in various positions. And, uh, and then we also have skin, scale, skull, and skeleton material that isn't um, barcoded at the moment, but there are collections uh, that do barcode and assign um, object tracking locations to their traditional materials, such as skin, skull, and skeletal materials. I know that UAM does this, for example. Um, and you can actually scan a skin into a drawer in a cabinet, in a range, or a skull. You can even track your skeletal material as it's coming in from the field into your IPM freezers, out of IPM, into your prep room, into the, your bug colony for cleaning, et cetera. So you can track this entire process even before the organism is cataloged, and you have a history of that. Let's go to this um, particular cryovile. If I want to see the history of this cryovile, it will tell me that it was originally scanned into a freezer box in 2019, May. But if I were to then, if my freezer went down, if freezer seven went down and I needed to move the entire rack worth of uh, freezers, uh, of samples, or the entire, all of the racks in this freezer to a new, um, freezer and I scanned that in, um, one scan of the rack or one scan of all the freezer contents to a different place would track all of the, sub the samples that were included and would provide a history that everything got moved on this date by me. And uh, this is a really powerful tool for me as a, a genomics collection manager to be able to uh, not only track frozen tissue samples separately on my own, but also then link to the various different divisions that are using the object tracking systems. And for me, this is important because I not only manage mammals, but I'm managing birds and parasites and fish and herps. And I can, uh, through this system, this object tracking system, be able to, to um, archive and track locations of and manage all of these different samples from different collections using the single system. So some other examples. Um, Really quickly, I wanted to mention, um, let me go to one. I know we're running out of time here, but I want to show one thing that, um, oh, we'll go to two events, this one. John mentioned that we can have samples with multiple events. And um, this particular wolf that I'm looking at here um, had a two different collecting events. If I um, expand this, expand. And I want to know which particular frozen tissue samples are associated with which particular event for this wolf. If I can highlight the linked components for this event and I go down to my parts table, I can see it's not a very deep highlight, but they're supposed to be sort of a beige color. The top three parts, the three blood samples are highlighted and they're showing that these three samples are associated with that particular event from 2019, uh, from December. And so, it allows us not only the events model, not, not only allows us to uh, keep track of all the samples from a single individual, but allows us to find them, locate them in our object tracking system. And let me see if there's, finally, I wanted to mention what the most important thing for me, which is loan tracking. And uh, I want to be able to issue spec uh, tissue subsamples for loan and know exactly what uh, part that uh, was subsampled for a particular loan and where it is found. Now this one, actually this heart and lung is a legacy sample that doesn't have a location, but I know that this, is, this particular sample was sampled for this particular loan. And if I go to the loan page, I can see, I can review the loan items and see all of those samples that are, were in that loan. Uh, check to see many of them actually have been barcoded subsequently. So I can go, I can see the linkage between the barcode and the, the samples that are on loan. If I run a list of barcodes through or a list of catalog numbers through, say I want 
subsamples of every one of these samples to be included in a loan, I can do that and it automatically updates the specimen record. I don't have to, I said that these are two separate parallel databases, but they're integrated through the barcode, through object tracking. So if the barcode is in the specimen record and I subsample tissue from a particular barcode, it automatically tells me that the specimen was subsampled and at what date for which loan. And loans also can be linked to projects. In this case, it was the Beringian uh, Covolution project, uh, as accessions can as well. So loans give you usage tracking. Accession gives you um, the information on where specimens came from, what funding agencies financed collection, for example, and which people and agencies were involved. So this, to me, is a hugely powerful tool, being able to use object tracking and uh, from sitting up in a completely on a, I'm on a different floor from everybody else uh, in the museum and yet I can link to and interact with all of the data that I need to be able to issue loans for tissues that are also managed by in, and the vouchers are managed in the different divisions. So I know we're running out of time so I'm going to stop there uh, and take any questions. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, John and Mary all. That was a great whirlwind tour through Arctos and gives people a good sense of different features we have. Um, so if any of you have questions, you can go ahead and either unmute or start typing in the chat. And I see that we have one already from Olga. And she, this goes to Marielle. How many personnel hours were involved in creating your catalog in Arctos for genomics data? Does Arctos cataloging involve individual entry of specimens or can you upload a bulk load of specimen data? We can absolutely bulk load data and we can do this for legacy material uh, coming in. So that's typically how we bring in new collections. And, um, but for new accessions, say John goes out in the field and he collect, collects a bunch of, of paramiscus and brings them back to the museum. We have a process where those are entered, that data is entered um, as individual records by students, but they can also be entered as bulk load files. Really, we have either option. And because um, I, as using, I'm using object tracking in genomic resources, I can go ahead and process the samples, record the barcodes, inventory the, the tissue samples and scan them into boxes. And as soon as the cataloging is done by the different divisions, in this case mammals, catalogs them by whatever means, that immediately links to the position of those samples in the genomic resources division. So I can catalog them myself or John can catalog them or some other person can catalog them. It doesn't matter. We have lots of different ways of doing that, but it is it does provide a division of labor and um, allows the different divisions to, to maintain control of their own data and yet I can still process loans and find the specimens and it's totally transparent for the different collections and the collection managers who are involved. Great, thanks. Any other questions before we wrap up? Well, I just want to say uh, thank you for everyone who attended. We have recorded this webinar, so it will be available on Arctos YouTube channel within the next day or so. And um, thanks so much to John and to Marielle for preparing a wonderful presentation. So hopefully we'll see you next time, January 12th. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.